Hi, in this video we will see how to integrate JBPM with an external LDAP system for both authentication and authorization. First, let's go to the configuration folder of the JBPM setup, the JBPM standalone configuration and uh, let's open up the specific standalone configuration file which is going to be used to start up uh, JBPM. In this case it's standalone.xml and in there uh, there are a few important system properties which needs to be added. Um, the first one being um, org ubefire domain and uh, the value of this property needs to be set as LDAP. Uh, followed by another property which is org jbpm human task callback which also needs to be set as LDAP uh, and this property will help to ensure that the user to group mapping will be retrieved from LDAP and that will be used during the runtime in order to distribute the work or the task uh, to the appropriate set of users that belong to the group that is set for the user task and similarly there is another property which is org jbpm human task user info and that also needs to be set with a value of ldap having done this the next step is to set the specific login module that needs to be used uh, uh, for both authorization and authentication and that needs to be set here in the security domain uh, element of the same standalone configuration file so first we need to define a new security domain with the name as other because this is the default security domain that's that that will be used during the runtime so we need to we need to define the name as other and whatever security domain that is existing uh, previously should be renamed to something else so that that is not really being used so the next step is uh, to define the authentication module that is uh, that has to be used which in this case is going to be uh, the LDAP extended login module uh, which is provided by JBoss so we need to set the login module code as org JBoss security auth SPI LDAP ext login module and followed by the other set of uh, important properties which are required uh, for this login module to connect to the external LDAP the first one being the the provider URL for the LDAP which uh, in my case is, is a local LDAP system so uh, this is the provider URL for that followed by the factory naming factory Java naming factory which is uh, Comsun JDI LDAP LDAP context factory and followed by the type of authentication that is required in this case it's a simple authentication which would use a uh, username and password so the username is is given here and the password here and followed by the base context dn now these the, the properties that follows the base context dn uh, until the the role name attribute id all of these attributes are purely decided based on the structure of the uh, the elements that are there in the LDAP. So for instance let's connect to the LDAP system and let's see how the different org units as well as the the set of users are distributed in the LDAP directory structure. So in this case uh, the users as well as the groups that are used by JBPM or available in the structure called OU is equal to group and OU is equal to user respectively the groups and the users now going back to the configuration file so the base context that has to be used to search for users will be this so this in this case is basically OU is equal to user and followed by OU is equal to BPM and followed by the topmost uh, org unit which is system so it's user BPM system and in this org unit the search for the users has to be done so so that's the base context DN that's been given here 
and followed with the base filter. So what is the specific filter attribute using which the user has to be searched? In this case, it's UID. So, so that's the one here and um, the roles context. So which in this case is again, where are the roles um, for which these users belong to or available in the LDAP directory structure? So let's go back to LDAP directory structure and we can see that uh, the groups are available in this org unit which is again available under BPM and system so the roles context DN should be pointing to that specific structure which is OU equal to group OU equal to BPM and OU equal to system right and then the role filter this is again an important attribute uh, and this is the attribute which acts as the bridge between uh, the users in the group so again going back to the LDAP if you see for instance this particular group which is called admin has uh, is is currently being mapped to users like mshan pam admin test1 and test2 and the, the the attribute which is used to map the users to this particular group is is called member and then that's the attribute that needs to be specified here the same goes with other types of groups or roles basically so for instance there's another group which is called checker and that's mapped uh, to the users test2 and pam admin by the attribute called member so that's the attribute which is actually used for defining the users to group mapping so that is the one that has to go into the role filter and then the role attribute id which is again the same as member and the role attribute role name attribute ID which is the CN and recursion whether it's required or not the number of levels of nesting so that is again given as zero and and rest of all the other configurations are set as the default values here so having done this the the next step uh, the important step um, to do is to provide this same configuration in in the required uh, class path as well so in this case um, it's going to be the deployments the key server war and meta inf sorry it's going to be web inf classes and here since we have specified the user group and uh, um, the user group callback and the user info in the standalone uh, configuration file at the top so those needs to be so the human task callback as well as the human task user info so there has to be specific property files which corresponds to uh, these properties and that those property files actually are jbpm user group callback properties and jbpm user info properties so we need to create these two properties files and let me open up the user group callback properties and it's exactly going to be the same set of values that has been provided in the uh, configuration uh, standalone configuration file so the same set of properties which has to be used for callback and and the user info jbpm user info properties will also be having the same set of configuration and once these two property files are created inside the key server war web inf classes directory now we are all set to um, to use the ldap system for authentication of um, the users that logs into the jbpm workbench as well as the distribution of the tasks by the jbpm runtime now let's let's start the key server and i have already started up the uh, the underlying ldap system as well so we will see that uh, as soon as the engine starts up 
it automatically connects to the uh, underlying LDAP and uh, we will be able to log into the uh, JBPM workbench with a, with a suitable LDAP user that's available in the LDAP system. Let's log in to JBPM console and I'm using one of the users which is available in the LDAP which is called PAM admin. Here we go, the login is successful. Now the user is authenticated against the LDAP system and and, and, and the login page uh, and then he lands into the key workbench page. And now let's open up one of the projects uh, which uses um, the group uh, that's, that's configured in the LDAP system for distributing the user tasks. For instance, let's see uh, in, in let's see one of the processes that has uh, a user task, and the user task is being mapped to a group which is available in in the LDAP system. So, for instance, we can see that if you go to the add. Uh, property it won't show the list of available groups from LDAP it will show only the rather the static set of groups that are configured in the uh, admin console here uh, but however if we can actually type in the name uh, like this and we can just go in for a new and then type in the name and then say ok and then it will get added like this so, so, so this is a user task which is mapped to a group which is there in LDAP and yeah and once this particular application is deployed uh, so I've already deployed this application so going to the process definitions and let's start a task start the particular process and we will see that it has already gone to this step. Uh, I think I have. Oh, I think I have uh, started a different version of this. Let me start the right version. Yeah, here we have a user task and a script task, and the control is currently with the user task, and uh, the user task is mapped to a group in the LDAP which is called Checker. And let's go to LDAP to see which are all the users that has that is mapped to the group called Checker. So we can see that it's PAM admin as well as test2. So let's log in as I think we already logged in as PAM admin. So if we go to the task inbox, here we go. So we see both the tasks of both the versions. Uh, I started two different versions of the process instances 1 uh, and 2 so both are actually shown here now let's log out and let's log in as another user let's say test1 who is not mapped to the checker group test1 and we would see that this user would not have got the task so which is exactly the same as what is expected but in the, the main difference here is the user to group mapping is actually um, the information about user to group mapping is is retrieved from LDAP uh, when the actual user when the actual uh, task distribution is when the when the distribution of the task is done to the set of users and if I log in back again with the uh, user test2 we would be seeing the same set of tasks being available in the task inbox for user2 because of the fact that user2 is is mapped to the group checker here we go this completes this video hope you enjoyed it